Good morning, Velocity. So don't let the suit fool you. I'm the founder and uh, CTO currently of a company called Aerospike. I founded this company to bring faster databases out into the world. We're an open source company and we are a fast system that is used in mostly in advertising use cases. So New York, how many of you are involved in ad tech? Companies like that? Okay, not too many hands there. So either it's early in the morning probably likely. Uh, Aerospike, the first use case of Aerospike was actually a New York company called AppNexus. I'm sure many of you know them. They've gotten a lot of uh, interesting press recently for being the first $1 billion valuation startup in New York City. What the founders of AppNexus realized in 2008, Brian O'Kelly, the CEO, said, hey, the advertising world is shifting. From being, user ba from being content based, where you buy advertising on a website, that was pretty easy technology based wise, to hey, let's be user based, let's buy and sell users, let's get your message in front of a user instead of getting your, your content in front of a website. But how do we price this? Brian said, you know what, we've got all this remnant, we've got all this space on different websites in 2008. He was part of DoubleClick and Write Media, and when Google and Yahoo brought this technology and brought user-based advertising into their companies, he founded a separate company. He realized you had to price advertising differently. So he created a system based on auctions that allowed people to buy and sell individual URLs and people on in real time. So this is a, in 100 milliseconds now. Just within 100 milliseconds, there's an auction run, and that auction allows an individual, uh, individual companies to price and try to buy a particular person, a particular, a particular space on a website in real time. That was an, un, an unusual idea, the idea of running an auction on every single advertisement on the internet, but one that allowed fair pricing between the different users, the different websites, everyone who might want to advertise. This has been a huge success, but it's led to a piece of technology and a technology innovation that really, I think, put them at the forefront of velocity at the time. So what they needed to do was get ads delivered within 100 milliseconds, and they needed to do that now at what is a rate of 3 million auctions per second in North America, 3 million per second. Each auction has a URL, it has some cookie data, it may have some IP address, some HTTP headers. So how do you actually create an ecosystem around this kind of real-time bidding and advertising, it turns out there, there were a lot of companies. There were multiple exchanges were created, multiple different sources for user data, and they created a new technology stack. This new technology stack said, instead of using the old system of having a cache and then having a layer of um, uh, a database layer and then having a storage layer, let's use in-memory at that frontier. And in memory then allows you to then say, we're gonna work at a faster rate and over more data. At the time, it was practical to have about 10 terabytes of data on the front side of their store. That means for the six billion cookies currently tracked in North America, you could store about 1K per person. Now, what happened was this system, there's a lot of analytics on the back side. That's now used as big data, and now, here we are, 2014, six years later, and uh, the technology stack used in advertising has now been propagating to many other uses. These in-memory NoSQL systems, now, for example, if you were watching, a lot of folks in our office were watching some of the Twitter uh, YouTube videos about Redis and their scale-out system. If you've been looking at scale-out uh, uh, memcache as well, this is the kind of system we're talking about. Instead of putting at the front edge a MySQL system, a sharded system like that with a cache in front of it, let's instead start using an architecture where in-memory is in front. So why is this system being used in more and more systems? So, 10 reasons. Sorry for the large number, but uh, there you go. So, first of all, speed. Speed really is life, and it really does make your life easier. When you have the kind of performance that these in-memory systems can provide, 
everything gets easier throughout your architecture. This is the layer that's on the front side of your system. And what, are, what these systems can provide right now for multiple in-memory systems, Redis came out recently and said they can do one million transactions per second on Amazon. Aerospike is up there as well, doing about a million. We're in, of course, a clustered environment. It's a little more complex. Couchbase is out there also. There are multiple providers out there giving you a million transactions per second per Amazon instance. These things will usually go even faster on bare metal systems. That just gives you a reference. What can you do with a million transactions per second? Well, this application tier that gets created, um, so here's some other numbers, uh, for example, that give you uh, the specific instances and specific types and allow you to see that running at that kind of rate, it doesn't break the bank. What, what this kind of speed gives an application developer is an easier model. Instead of the old world, where you have a multi-tier layer, where you have app servers, cache, database, and storage, each one of those separately maintained, you have one system, one database system, that is in charge of the reliability and the consistency model. This is a pretty important distinction. And if you can leave, take away one thing from this talk, that's the one thing I would like you to think about, is the idea of using your database instead of having cache database storage as the new front edge model. Now forget analytics for a minute. Analytics, it's gonna be back there. There's gonna be a lot of different analytics systems in your, uh, you know, you're gonna have Hadoop out there, you're gonna have a variety of SQL systems, but on that front edge, using key value as your primary metaphor gives you uh, this kind of flexibility, and you should not, in fact, need a cache on your front edge, and you shouldn't need a complex storage system either. You can get an in-memory database with a high level of reliability from multiple open source systems. Now, agility is also very important in this, with this kind of velocity because you can simply add new components to your database. And that's been one of the great benefits of NoSQL is the ability to uh, simply be able to add and that's part of being in memory. We no longer are constrained by disks and blocks and table layouts that all have to be fixed. Now, one of the other benefits of this system is the ability to uh, read and write at the same time. This is one of the reasons typically people have used in-memory caches in front of their databases, and it gives you business flexibility. Now, in the advertising world, it was important because you think about every single user and personalizing, gaining velocity for users. You figure out quickly that you need to be able to read and write in the ability to um, change a user's state as they have seen something is the key element of personalization. Read-write ratios of about 50% are very common when you're dealing with internet personalization. Another benefit of key value in memory is the fact that it scales so well. You're dealing with an individual row. Your system, whether it be sharded or clustered, has the ability to find the exact server without a complicated load balancing tier. And then if you have written to a key value system without a lot of queries, you'll be able to scale that system without actually re-engineering anything in your application. So one of the other benefits of a key value system is that some of these systems are tuned for flash. So not only do you have RAM and RAM economics, but you also have the economics of flash. Now, this is more than just putting SSDs underneath a database and getting the kind of 2x, 3x performance that you might expect, but actually being able to use flash as it is meant to be used will give you hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, and all major cloud providers now have multiple different flash offerings. So, what I tell people trying to use Aerospike is if you can spend that extra 70 to 100 microseconds per request, you're probably better off in flash. But your in-memory tier should be able to support both natively. Another important factor in agility at this front edge tier is the state model. You want to be able to insert new cloud providers and host offerings uh, on the fly. You want to be able to snap in a new hosting provider and a new geographical area. Another important factor is the, the ability that you need to be able to have a software layer that you can switch from cloud to on-premise and back again, because sometimes each one of those is important. 
The ability to do analytics over your frontier is also important because you need to be able to have uh, some analytics on your front edge tier. Finally, the importance of open source within this market is not to be understated because the ability of engineers to look at the code and understand the code, as well as to be able to contribute fixes, that's where the market is now and I think it's a great development. The number of use cases for key value stores go beyond social media and advertising. We're starting to see them now in telco and banking now that there's a level of reliability to these key value stores and clustering. So my goal here is to have you consider Aerospike from some of your previous projects. We're one of the open source databases in this area, but also to keep your framework simple and to allow them to scale to give you higher velocity. Thank you very much.